In this presentation, we're going to add loan payments with the help and use of bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see the loan payments, payments on loans go through the bank feeds, and we're going to add those to our financial statements. Let's start accounting with Sage Business Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars company summary page within Sage. We're going to be adding or opening our financial statements. Go into the reporting dropdown. Go into our balance sheet. Once open, we're going to go back up top. We're going to be hovering over that balance sheet. We're going to duplicate that balance sheet. Then we're going to go do the same thing for the P&L profit and loss. Going back to the first tab, hovering over the reports again so that we can then pick up the P&L. Once that is open, we're going to duplicate that tab too. We're going to do that by mousing over the tab up top, right-clicking it, and duplicating it. Let's check our dates. Going back to the balance sheet on the tab to the right, we do see the date is correct on 2020. That's where I want to be in the P&L. Let's check that date. I'm going to have the beginning date on 4-1 so that we just see the current month we're entering. The, the ending date is long. There's nothing after uh, April, so uh, 1231 is fine. Let's go to the first tab then. We're going to go to our banking information in the ribbon. So the banking information, which is in the ribbon. And then we're going to go and we're going to be opening up the six items that are still in the Sage Bank Feed Limbo, not part of our financial statements yet. We're going to be using this information to pull them on over. And we're looking at uh, the information for payments that are made on a loan. So here are our loan payments. So this is another one that kind of deviates. It's a little bit more confusing and we'll just want to discuss how you could deal with loan payments that, that uh, you might make in the simplest type of way uh, that you can. So note that when we have the loan payments, typically those are going to be on some type of, of loan where we're going to have interest and principal payments per, per uh, payment that we make. So in other words, oftentimes the payment is actually the same here, but the the um, amount that's going to be allocated to interest and principal will differ so how do we deal with that well let's take a look at an amortization schedule just to consider this if we had a loan let's say for seventy two thousand loan five percent interest rate the payment might be the one thousand three fifty nine that payment is standard however there's usually three accounts that are affected instead of just two when we make the payment which is going to be the the uh de decrease in the loan amount the principal amount of the loan and then interest expense, and then we're going to have the decrease to cash. So the cash is going to decrease by this amount, this amount allocated to interest expense, and the decrease in the principal of the loan here. Not So not only that, but uh, we're also going to have the fact that the interest in principal per payment will differ. Same payment, different interest in principal. So oftentimes when you take out a loan, then the loan will actually give you, hey, this is the loan balance. They might give you even the interest rate and they'll definitely give you the payment amount, right? But they're not going to typically give you the amortization table. You may not have the amortization table. So then you're, you're going to usually want to work with your accountant and possibly the accountant at the end of the year can help you to make the amortization uh, table. And then once you have the amortization table, you could break out each payment between the correct portion but we can't really memorize the transaction. It's not the easiest thing to do because even if, you know, even if we get the, the amounts right, there's, two, there's three accounts affected instead of two and the, the breakout between interest and principal is different. So we'd have to do a different payment each time. Another method we might use, we might say, hey, look, it, since the accountant is gonna make the amortization table anyways and we need that, and we're gonna have the help from the accountant. Why don't we use a, them to help us with a periodic adjustment? And then we could just basically say, I'll just make one payment, the whole payment, and I'll decrease the loan amount by it, which means I'm going to overstate the decrease in the loan amount because really uh, there should be an interest in principal portion. But that's okay. I'll just put it there. And then at the end of the month or the end of the year, the accountant can then make the amortization schedule like this and then make the periodic adjustment, breaking out the proper amount of interest to expense it at, at a periodic, uh, you know, uh, adjusting entry time into month, into year. And they can also write the loan balance down to where the loan balance should be. They're also, if they're going to do financial reporting, going to need to break out the short term and long term portion. And that way, you got a nice simple breakout. On the accounting side, we could stick to a cash basis method. I just want one account. I want to be just recording that one account with the use of the bank feeds and make it as easy as possible. And then make an adjusting entry at the end of the month or year where you can adjust it to the amortization table, break out the interest and break out short term and long term portion if necessary. So that's what I would kind of recommend. If Now, if I go back over to our uh, information over here on the balance sheet, we had a loan on the books, but we're going to actually say that this is a this is a different loan. So this is a different loan that we had on the books. We don't have the current loan on the books. Now, 
when you first make a loan on the books, it might have been a loan that was there before we started doing the bookkeeping. That's one factor, which again, I would I would then ask the accountant, hey, could you set up the loan? You know, put the put the loan on the book and make the correct balance, which would be a credit to the loan and then a debit to uh, probably retained earnings. Or when you finance equipment or take out a loan, if like you took out a loan and financed the equipment, again, if you're kind of on a cash basis and you're having your accountant help you, you might say, hey, look, I recorded the equipment that we spent on the equipment, the cash that was paid on the equipment. I would like you to then to record the difference, the loan amount that's going to be on the on the equipment and then the purchase price of the equipment and then do the tax preparation with that because they're going to have to need it for the tax preparation anyways. And if you do that, then you can kind of just separate between a cash basis and the accrual basis and you can make it still pretty easy for the accountant to, to adjust because they're going to have to adjust it anyways. They're going to have to deal with the equipment purchase and adjusting the loans at the end of the year if they're going to do an adjusting entry anyways and so you may as well make that that separation as easy as possible you know record your payments on a, on a bank feed basis as easy as possible and then allow them to to make the adjustment as long as it's clear about what that adjustment will be so what we're going to do is i'm going to set up another a note payable i'm going to put it underneath this one and i'm and i'm not even going to set up the loan amount of it i'm just going to record the payments to it and then depend, we're going to imagine we're depending on the accountant at the end of the year to set up the loan balance, do the amortization table, and then break out the interest and principal portion. So what might that look like? I'm going to go back to the first tab. I'm going to right click on this tab. I'm going to duplicate it. We're going to go then to our chart of accounts so that we can add uh, a new account. So I'm going to go to the accounting up top. That'll take us back to the summary page within Sage. And then we're going to go to the uh, settings, I believe it is, the settings within the ribbon all the way to the right the settings and then we're going to go on down to the chart of accounts so chart of accounts is under the financial settings i'm going to go into the chart of accounts and i'm just going to add another loan account let's see what the number is on this one so if i go on down to the loan account we have this one is 27 so i'm going to make it like 2710 2710 so i'm going to say add new actually wait a second that's not correct i'm going to scroll back down I want to pick up this one. It's 25. So I'm going to make it 25, 10, 25, 10, 25, 10, 25, 10, 25, 10, 25, 10. And then this is going to be a note payable. And I'm going to, I would put like the last four digits of the, of the, of the note number, which I'm going to say is five, seven, four, six display name. is going to be the, the same and I'll keep it at that. So I'm going to say, save that. I forgot the category. So I put the current liability. It's going to be a current liability category. It's got to be current liability so we can apply it out within the bank feeds because when we pay it, it's assumed that it's being paid out of the, a current, I believe is the, the thought process there. So I'm going to say save and then go back to our, our information over here. And I'm looking for the note payable. So I'm going to apply these both out to the note payable. So I could rec have the same vendor. I could say chase. We may not need uh need the vendor there because it's the bank let's see if i already have a chase did i already put chase in here no so I, i'll put it in there chase tab and i'm just going to add chase and say okay and then i'm going to make this the electronic and this is going to be notes payable and i think the one we just set up is the five seven four six so five, seven, four, six, I'm just double check it. If I, I jump over the balance sheet just to double check, it's not the one, yeah, it's, it's a new one. All right, that's the one. Going back to the, to the bank feeds. So there it is. What's gonna happen when we do this? It's gonna decrease the checking account. The other side is gonna be going to this uh, note payable account, uh, which is gonna make a negative liability because we don't have the beginning balance. We'll take that look at that in a second. Let's create it. And then if we had another payment, again, it would populate for us automatically. So see how easy this is. We've, we've broke it down to, us seeing it within the bank feeds and then being able to apply it out to one other account not requiring us to basically do a, a split type of transaction but simply record it to one account and then i'm going to say this is electronic and then i'm just going to add that so i'll create that and then let's check out what happens if i go back to the balance sheet then and i uh, uh, recalculate this we know that they're going to be coming out of the checking account so that's pretty straightforward the other side then it's going to be in the liabilities we created this liability so again, notice it's, it's two payments going to a loan and we're going to say, I know the loan is there. We have the loan out, but it's not on the books yet, either because it was created before we started doing the bookkeeping in the current system or because we financed something like equipment. Either way, 
I would then periodically ask the accountant to say, hey, look, I'd like you to put the loan on the books, create the amortization table, adjust the interest portion and the loan balance to be what should be on the amortization table. So then once you provide the purchasing information, if it was a purchase of equipment to the accountant, they can then say, okay, here's, here's the, the loan amount and possibly the purchase of equipment amount. Here's the loan terms. Here's the payment. Then create the amortization table. Then they can put the loan on the books, possibly by, you know, credit, if they purchase the equipment, debit the equipment, increase the equipment, credit the liability, the loan on, on the books that would put it on the books at the 72,000. And then we have these two payments that have reduced the loan balance by the full payment, including the interest. So then they can break out the interest, which would be this amount would be the 596 reducing uh, or, or increasing the loan balance by that and recording the other side to the interest expense, leaving us with the loan balance of the 65 or the 69,878 after that point. Then if they need to, they can break out the short term and long term portion if they need that either for taxes or financial reporting at the end of the year, depending on uh, your business needs. So note, a lot of this stuff the accountant's going to have to do basically anyways. Uh, so that, you know, you may as well, if you can make it in a situation where you could be on a cash basis method and use the bank feeds as easy as possible, and then have that adjusting process periodically at the end of the month or year, that, that is a way that you can uh, think about working things out with the accountant. So in any case, uh, there's no effect on the, on the P and L at this point in time, the profit and loss would be affected by the interest income in our system. We will record the interest income again, periodically in the adjusting entry process. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.